Are you ultra light? What's your base weight, dude? How many Jupiter videos have you watched? If you were ultra light, you would follow the 10 commandments of ultra light. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna have some goofs and some gags in this one, but uh, I'm not religious, so I don't really know shit about the actual 10 commandments. No disrespect. Watch your profanity. I've had this video idea for like two years and we're finally doing it. I did do a podcast on my podcast, Trail Tales, by the way. If you didn't know, I have a podcast where me and my friend Baker each came up with five commandments of ultralight and then we went through them it was a hilarious episode i got really good feedback on it so if you go listen to that episode i will have a link in the description let's do it commandment number one thou shalt not carry a full-sized toothbrush how could I make a video about ultralight hiking without making a joke about the toothbrush? Okay, but it's really not a joke to be honest. I take this very seriously. I can't remember the last time I went backpacking and took a full size toothbrush. That's just not something you do. Don't do it. So a lot of you might be thinking, okay, Kyle, how much weight could you actually save by cutting a toothbrush? It doesn't matter. It's the principle that matters. Any extra weight is gone. Get it out of here, throw it into the Mississippi River. <laughs> That's probably against leave no trace actually. Maybe don't do that. Throw it into the trash or recycle it. Do you recycle? I, I don't fucking know. A couple months ago, I was in the state of Hawaii and I was hiking the Kalalau Trail. I forgot to pack a toothbrush. And so when we landed on Kauai, my girlfriend was like, don't worry, I got an extra toothbrush, dude. And she handed me a full size toothbrush, dude. Like, I can't do that. It's actually very sweet of her. I didn't have pruning shears. I didn't have a chainsaw. I left my chainsaw, my UL chainsaw at home, unfortunately. And so I had to just resort to using my bare hands and snapping that thing in half. I almost didn't do it, to be honest. I know that's blasphemy. Is that how that works? I don't know. <laughs> so I snapped it in half and all was well. Commandment number two. Commandment number two is thou shalt worship miles and not smiles. Cause ultralight hiking is serious business. This one was actually my friend Baker's idea. We went over it in that podcast I mentioned a second ago, so I just wanna give him credit. I've never seen an ultralight hiker smile in my entire life. If you're just going out there to have fun, why would you even bother being ultralight? You might as well bring a fishing pole or a camp chair. We're gonna talk about that soon. You could even bring your mother, who is definitely not ultralight, by the way. If you're all about the smiles, you might as well bring all that stuff. But if you're ultra light and you're following commandment number two, the smiles do not matter. It's all about the miles. That's why you're cutting weight from your pack in the first place. Didn't I say that this was gonna have some informational value at the beginning? And let's be honest, there's nothing fun about cold soaking and sleeping on a, a sleeping pad that's literally thinner than I can even, the human eye can even recognize. Oh yeah. Oh. Um. Yeah, no, that's, that's good stuff right there. That's also the size of my cock. Commandment number three is thou shalt not ever get dehydrated from not drinking enough electrolytes. That's not an actual commandment, but it is a great segue into the sponsor of this video, which is Drink Element. So picture this, you're hiking along, you're having a good time, but you're going uphill and so you're starting to sweat. And next thing you know, you're dehydrated and your muscles are cramping up and you feel terrible. And that's because you are not replacing your electrolytes. And so you pull out whatever nonsense electrolytes you bought at Walmart and you mix that in with your water. You take a sip and it mm -hmm. tastes terrible. You don't even end up finishing it. And so you still haven't replaced your electrolytes. I know we've all experienced this, right? But you will not experience this if you use Drink Element to replace those electrolytes. And that is because Drink Element has the best best taste that you will find of any electrolyte drink mix ever. They have a flavor for everybody, like raspberry salt, for instance. That is my second favorite flavor. Citrus salt is my first favorite, although I've already drank it all, so I don't have any on me at the moment. Orange salt is a close third. And if you have a crazy palate, and so these basic, I guess, flavors aren't gonna cut it for you, you're in luck because Drink Element also has flavors like lemon habanero, mango chili, and even chocolate salt. And you're also probably thinking, Kyle, all these flavors sound amazing. I wish I could just try them all. If you go to drinkelement.com slash Kyle Hates Hiking, that is drinklmnt.com slash Kyle Hates Hiking, and you place an order on their website through that link, you will get a free sample pack of eight different flavors thrown in with your order. That way you can try all the amazing flavors I've mentioned in this video, plus a few more. 
And you can really see that I'm not BSing you when I talk about this company in so many of my videos. One more time, drinklmnt.com slash Kyle Hates Hiking. I'll have a link right at the top of the description. Go place an order, go get your free sample pack. And thank you so much to Drink Element for continuing to support this ridiculous content. All right, on to the actual third commandment of ultralight backpacking. Thou shalt consider any day under 18 miles as a Nero. Now, if you don't know what a Nero is, it means nearly zero. It's a through hiker, backpacker, hiker trash slang. Very often when it's used, people are referring to a day where you just hike like a couple miles. I mean, nearly zero, say one or two miles, and then you go into town and you took you take a Nero. But if you are truly ultralights, if you are following the 10 commandments of ultralights, anything under 18 miles is a Nero. And if you're gonna successfully complete a through hike or a backpacking trip, you can't be taking Nero's every single day. That means you gotta be hiking well over 18 miles every single day. If you're gonna do say 17 and a half miles, you, you better be spending at least 95% of that day in a hotel room in town. We're talking 40 mile days, 50 mile days, 69 mile days every single day. Otherwise you're slacking, dude. That's fucking horse shit. <laughs> Commandment number four of ultralight backpacking. We all know that shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife if you are a Christian. Or uh, is there other religions that, uh, uh, I'm stupid. But when you're ultra light, there is something thy should covet. Thou shalt covet thy neighbor's gear if it's lighter than yours. If the person that set up their tent next to yours, AKA thy neighbor has lighter gear than you, of course, you should be jealous because it's better than yours because yours sucks. Not to mention, this is also a good way to improve your gear because if you see some guy rolling in with shorts that are shorter than yours, a tent that's lighter than yours, he probably has more Instagram followers than you do. Thanks, asshole. What? It's not gonna do you any good to just shrug him off and be like, stupid guy. No, dude, you should be jealous because he's got it going on. Covet anything that's made of DCF. Number five, thou shalt have no shoes other than trail runners. And there is two different directions that we can take this one. The first direction, this was another one of Baker's ideas, is that you should not be carrying camp shoes. If you're ultra light, you don't need camp mm. shoes. You don't, you don't throw them away. Take them out of your pack, toss them in the trash and get your ass back on trail. If you're ultra light, you're not carrying camp shoes. You're probably not even carrying a tent. There's also another direction that you can take this one. Thou shalt have no shoes other than thy trail runners could also mean thy or thou, whatever it is, better not be caught hiking in boots. Boots can burn in hell. Remember, I've said it before, one pound on your feet equals 50,000 pounds on your balls. Wait, no. One pound on your feet equals, what is it, like six or nine, maybe 69 pounds? on your back, it's, you don't, just wear trail runners for fuck's sake. Commandment number six, thou shalt not bear false witness about thou's base weight. We've all been guilty of this, right? And I can't be the only one who's lied about my base weight, right? Right? You've done it too, right? Am I am the only one? Oh, it's very important that we be honest about our base weights. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm ripping on people who aren't ultralight, but the truth is I'll be ripping on you even more if you claim ultralights, if you lie about being ultralight, but you actually are, the, what, what's just regular lightweight, I think? Your base weight is actually 11.5 pounds instead of 10. When you send me your lighter pack, when you're posting it on our ultralights and asking for a shakedown, you better be honest about that. Don't get me wrong, I get the temptation. Let's say your base weight is normally about 10.9546942069696920 pounds. You might be tempted to just round down, be like, ah, it's 10 pounds. Don't worry about it. But when I pick that shit up, we're gonna be able to tell that you are slightly above 10 pounds and that you lied. Commandment number seven. This one's actually probably the only practical one in this entire list, to be honest. <laughs> Thou shalt employ items with multiple uses. The classic multi-purpose item. This is an essential part of ultralight backpacking. You can use your sleeping pad as a frame for your backpack. You can use your trekking poles as the poles for your tent. You can use your sleeping bag as a tent. You can use your tent as a backpack. You can use your backpack as your shoes. You can use your shoes as your hat. You 
use your hat as your spork. You can use your spork as your tent stakes. You can use your tent stakes as... I, I guess that's that's pretty much it. I don't understand why anyone would carry a trowel these days. You already have a trowel. It's called your spork. It helps you get the food in, and then it helps you when you need to bury it after it comes out. Don't forget that. Commandment number eight, thou shalt take the classic ultralight photo at every available opportunity. What is the classic UL photo, you may ask? Well, um, it's where you're standing somewhere, anywhere, and you hold your pack by your pinky or your fingers, or you hold it in a way that clearly shows that you are not comfortable at all when you're backpacking. <laughs> you stand there and you go, uh, dude, this is the worst example. You Okay. Even if you're not hiking, you should still take this photo whenever you can. If you're at a friend's wedding, if you're at a friend's funeral, obviously. And of course, anytime when you're hiking, anytime you get to a view, a shelter, or certainly anytime a cute girl hikes by, dude, you gotta stop and you gotta take that photo. And then you post it on Instagram and the likes just start racking up, dude. You're getting DMs, you're getting emails. Next thing you know, Drink Element is sponsoring you. Show respect to the ultralight god AKA Jupiter Hikes, and take that photo whenever you possibly can. Commandment number nine, thou shalt forego comfort. There's nothing comfortable about sleeping on some of this shit, dude, these people. There's nothing comfortable about sleeping on a one eighth inch thick pad. You sleep on that, all night on that bad boy? I could easily sleep all night on this thing. It's so comfortable. Sarcasm. Or cold soaking, or sleeping under a tarp with no bug net where you're getting attacked by mosquitoes. There is no such thing as a comfortable setup that is ultralight. Even if you have a five pound backpacking gear setup that's somehow comfortable, you're not ultralight just by this principle alone. The only comfort an ultralight hiker can have is the comfort of knowing that they went out there and they made themselves miserable for like 40 days in a row or whatever and still managed to finish the AT. And now they're sitting at home or more likely in their like minivan conversion and they're looking at their photos that they took of them holding their backpack and now they're a little bit comfortable because they're in the van. That's the only comfort allowed with ultralight. When you're on the trail, thou shall or shalt or shat <laughs> forego comfort. Don't forget it. And commandment number 10, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's camp chair. You've been hiking all day. You hit 49.3 whatever miles. Your day's over with, you roll into camp. It's probably the sun's just going down and you pull up and dude, you see this guy, he's been sitting there since 2.30 in the afternoon in his camp chair. He's got a fire going. He probably has a stove and you sit down on the dirt. There's ticks it's all over your ass. They're up your ass. They're ticks in the ass and you just got to sit there and watch this guy in his nice comfy chair but you know what you cannot be jealous of that thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's camp chair you're on a whole different level than this dude okay mm -hmm. you have completely different reasons for being out there you're out there to hike he's out there to camp he's out there to sit in the same spot it's probably a terrible spot you're out there to be connected with nature right that's why you hiked 50 miles in a day and didn't stop a single time to take in the scenery <laughs> and what connects you more with nature than sitting your little freaking butt right down right smack onto it dude this guy has a layer of separation not to mention he's carrying a pound plus probably a lot more worth of weight for complete nonsense just to sit there, dude, what are you doing? So there's no reason to be jealous of this guy. There's no reason to cover it. There's really not even a reason to talk to him, to be honest. You can just turn around and face the other way, do what you gotta do. Do not covet thy neighbor's camp chair because it's nonsense. And this entire video is also nonsense. So I hope you appreciated it. And if you did, help me get to my goal of 200,000 subscribers. Hit subscribe, dude, just tap that button. I would appreciate that a lot. And of course, thank you guys so much for watching this absolute nonsense video.